I mean, I think you, I mean, you need a computer. Or I think because of this. Uh, you can have this computer. Yeah, but I don't know. You want me to get back there? Where's Sasha? I haven't talked to him by myself. Oh. All right, we have a way. International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia is now in session. Ludians do Tribunal Penal International to Flags Yugoslavia Air Oihat. Please be seated. Good morning to everyone. Madam Registrar, would you please call the case? Good morning, Your Honours. This is case IT 03690, the prosecutor versus Yavid Zastanišić and Franko Sinatra. Thank you, Madam Registrar. Um, we here this morning to hear the opening statement, but exceptionally I'd like to invite the Stanisic defense to uh, to present itself, uh, since we have a new member on the team. Uh, introducing uh, Mr. Scott Martin as, as the co-counsel for Mr. Stanisic, and of course uh, others that you're very familiar yes. with um, sit around me. I think also, though, you haven't been introduced to Ms. De Bruyne, who is our legal assistant. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Martin, especially for you, um, uh, a welcome in this courtroom. Uh, the Stanisic defense went through some difficult times, as has been discussed in court, and your arrival certainly will um, improve that situation. Uh, Thank you. Well, Mr. Petrovic, I do not know whether that's the reason why Mr. Bakrach is not present today. Uh, so one more on the other bench, one less for you. Uh, but welcome to you as well. <laughs> Your Honours, thank you. I do believe that that uh, uh, negative scenario will not come true. Mr. Bakrach will be joining us in the course of the day and will be uh, a complete team. Thank you. Yes, I take it that he has important things to do at this moment. Um, we are here today to hear the delayed opening statement of the Stanisic defense. Um, Mr. Jordas, are you ready to present that statement? Your Honor, sir, I am. Please proceed. Your Honour, well, uh, I hope, uh, have a book in front of you. Uh, many of those exhibits referred to within our confidential exhibit, <coughs> so we have not uh, produced uh, slides to go on the screen. Uh, the prosecution <coughs> alleged that Mr. Stanisic acted in concert with a variety of civilian and non-civilian officials and groups from April 1991 to 31st of December 1995 to forcibly remove the majority of non-Serbs from large areas of Croatia and Bosnia through the commission of the crimes alleged in the indictment. The prosecution bring the case and they must prove it. The defense case will demonstrate that the prosecution case fails to convince and justice demands that Mr. Stanisic be acquitted of all charges. The prosecution case rests upon rumor, mythology, exaggeration, and outright fabrication. To find Mr. Stanisic guilty pursuant to this joint criminal enterprise, or to find that he contributed to any of the crimes alleged, would be to strain the elements of the modes of liability, 
and turn them into instruments for attributing guilt by association. The prosecution invites you to hold Mr. Stanisic responsible, not for what he did, not even for what the Serbian DB did, but what the whole of the Serbian MUP did. We urge you to reject the invitation. The council is invited to read more slowly for the sake of the interpreters. Thank you. I beg your pardon. In short, you must be satisfied beyond a reasonable doubt that there is a sufficient link between Mr. Stanisic and these crimes. And I emphasize sufficient. The def defense case will establish that there is no sufficient link. The evidence is just not there. This is not to argue that the case advanced against Mr. Stanisic is not seductive or that without explanation it doesn't cast suspicion. We accept that there are explanations that are due and the defence case will provide them. Explanations rooted in context and common sense not the broad brushstrokes that have been used to mask the fundamental flaws in the prosecution case. A proper analysis of Mr. Stanisic's acts and conduct in the context in which they took place and the chaos in which he operated will expose those flaws. Evidence giving rise to mere suspicion is evidence that fails to amount to guilt. The deceptive premise of the prosecution case is that Mr. Stanisic is responsible for the actions of all those associated with or employed by the Serbian MUP or DB. No matter the nature of that association or the activity pursued, it is simply not enough to say, suggest that Mr. Stanisic His employees, operatives, or associates participated in the war, or even that those associated in some loose way with the DB committed crimes or acted in furtherance of a criminal purpose. <coughs> the prosecution case is an expedient one. At the heart of it lies the false premise that Mr. Stanisic was omnipresent and omnipotent and could control thousands of people and bend them to his will. The indictment does not allege superior responsibility. That omission is a clear acknowledgement that the prosecution cannot prove that Mr. Stanisic had effective control not even over Mr. Samasevich. Yet the case advanced does little but present employer-employee relations as dispositive of Mr. Stanisic's guilt. It's a theory designed to compensate for the lack of evidence. Mr. Stanisic must have intended the crimes he must be found to have significantly contributed to the common criminal plan. The ICTY has made clear that to hold a member of a JCE responsible for crimes committed by non-members of the enterprise, it has to be shown It has to be shown that the crime can be imputed to one member of the joint criminal enterprise and that this member, when using the perpetrator, acted in accordance with the common plan. The existence of this link is a matter to be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis. 
So the fact that Mr. Stanisic knew or had friendly relations with individuals such as Karadic or at times uh, Martic or Ilya Kuk. or Ilya Kujic, or Radovan Kostic, or others involved in setting up Serbian structures is plainly not enough. Nor that some of these men and others were employed as operatives or reserve forces within the DB, or even that some of Arkan's men or perhaps other undesirable characters were employed on a temporary basis within the DB, and I use the term employed in a loose sense. <coughs> the legal requirements I've outlined are particularly important in this case because of the nature of the work of the Serbian <coughs> DB, or for that matter, any state security. As your honors will see from slide one, the core task of the DB was to collect evidence of activity that threatened the constitutional order of the Republic. It achieved this goal by using operatives to gather information from a network of associates or sources. Of course, those operatives or those sources could attempt to do this from a cozy armchair in front of the fire at home, but that would defeat the purpose. Operatives and sources had to be close to the events, the events that impacted upon state security. Their associates or sources must be those who are even more proximate to the events and may in fact be criminals themselves. The case against Mr. Stanisic, as the defense will demonstrate, is built on obscuring the central fact. We submit the prosecution theory is analogous to a prosecuting authority prosecuting a police officer who went undercover in an organization suspected of committing crime to collect information and then prosecuting the officer's superior. and then prosecuting the officer's superior for committing crime, and then relying upon the actual criminals as witnesses in his subsequent trial. If I may give a short example, we know that Ilya Kojic worked as an operative for the Serbian DB. We know that witnesses such as JF030 said that Kojic went to Belgrade and reported directly to Stanisic. But there has been no evidence that during the period between 1991 and 1995, Kojic imposed himself on the SBWS government using his employment for the DB as authority to achieve any criminal purpose. On the contrary, as JF034 confirmed, the government of the SBWS worked by a majority vote, 
and it had no contacts with the DB of Serbia in 91 and 92. The defense case will show that DB operatives were employed in the main for the limited purpose of gathering intelligence. The prosecution invite you to use that role to infer that Mr. Stanisic procured these individuals. The Stanisic defense will be divided into four parts. The first part, as your honors can see from slide two, is the work and structure of the DB. The first part is critical. It will lay out the basic structure of the DB and its discrete place within the Serbian mob. The witnesses will explain how the basic structures <coughs> were centers within Serbia and administrations within Belgrade. It will explain how the centers collected information and supplied it to the administrations, how the chiefs of the administrations were supposed to supply that information to the assistants or to the deputy or the chief. <coughs> only very important information would reach the chief, and only then if the deputy saw fit to provide that information. The witnesses will explain the basic employment structure within the DB and how each administration had delegated authority to recruit new employees or staff or obtain logistics and how each was supplied directly from the eighth administration. The prosecution have studiously avoided delving too deeply into these topics for good reason. To explain how the DB worked and the responsibilities that each type of worker had and the systems of delegated responsibilities would undermine the theory that Mr. Stanisic is responsible for every employee, every temporary worker, every source, every hanger-on, and every supply of logistics used or distributed within the service. The proposition that Mr. Stanisic is responsible for employing every individual engaged at any time by the DB is about as convincing as expecting the president of the ICTY to know who is employed at the ICTY at any time. The precise na nature of their tasks and also to be responsible for their misbehavior whilst on mission. Slide three, <coughs> uh, we move to the work and structure of the DB. As discussed, the DB witnesses will explain the core work of the DB. It involved counter It involved primarily counterintelligence. The, the DB was not a police service. Its core duties were not ordinary crime prevention or controlling border crossings. Its core duties was counterintelligence. At best, it had around 2,000 or so employees. 
and most of these were support staff, not trained operatives. It would be impossible to have done what the prosecution claim it did. This was the work of the public security, whose numbers were in excess of 15,000. Under Milosevic, these numbers grew as Badger was promoted above Stanisic, and as he, not the accused, became the number one man. The first accused persistent pursuit of Operation Thompson, designed to disable and neutralize extremist groups within Serbia, may well have put many extremists out of action and saved hundreds, if not thousands, of Serbian and non-Serbian lives. This evidence is not to be reduced to mere mitigation. As the DB witnesses will attest, it is a powerful manifestation of Stanisic's state of mind. These sober and careful professionals, professionals will confirm <coughs> Mr. Stanisic's non-ethnocentric approach to his work and the difficulties <coughs> that had to be overcome by the DB to take the action that it did. They, They will confirm that the DB under Stanisic took action within its jurisdiction in a difficult political climate to prosecute all those who committed crimes against civilians of all races and creeds within and outside of Serbia. Mr. Tunin's advanced a theory that the failure of the DB to prevent paramilitary formation within Serbia was illustrative of Mr. Sanisic's support for their criminal actions in Bosnia and Croatia. Mr. Tunin's partisan approach to his task was evident for all to see. Operation Thompson escaped his notice. The hundreds, if not thousands, of actions taken to try to disable the paramilitaries is an eloquent illustration of the core task of the C Serbian DB and the accused's approach to his job. As slide four demonstrates, the paramilitaries were creative and the job was difficult. Slide five shows the locations of the Serbian DB centers. The centers near, near the border with Croatia and Bosnia were overwhelmed with this work. The extremists were flooding across the border from the war zones into Serbia. Hundreds of weapons were flooding into the country and crime was rife. Seshal was agitating in the Serbian assembly <coughs> and the prospect of civil war in Lerbia, Serbia loomed large. Mr. Stanisic had no interest in creating, organizing, supplying and directing paramilitaries. His work was to dismantle them as and when they returned to Serbia and threatened the constitutional order.
the defence witnesses will explain the political and logistical environment that hampered that work. Your Honours will see at slide number six. A meeting of the Supreme Defence Council on the 31st of July 1992. On page 15 of the exhibit, it indicates that Arkan appears to be assisted by the Federal Secretariat of the Interior. Your Honours will note the date, July of 1992, after many of the crimes in Bosnia had been committed. <coughs> the prosecution attempt to link Mr. Stanisic to Arkan and to those crimes. Arkan had strong links with Bogdanovic and of course the future deputy minister of the MOP, Radovan Stoicic. The DB, as the defence will show, could not do anything about that. The defence case will prove that from 1991 to 1995, Mr. Stanisic had nothing whatsoever to do with Arkan. Had he known that the men from Arkan's Tigers or Super Tigers had been employed, even on a reserve force basis, he would have reacted and prevented it consistent with his practice of preventing the DB from being tainted by such associations. Moreover, as Arkan hid behind the federal sub and committed crimes in Zvornik in 1992, it was Stanisic who arrested the Vukovic brothers and prosecuted Dusko for those very same war crimes. Mr. Stanisic personally insisted upon it. As the third defence witness will confirm, this was startling news within Serbia at the time. The notion of prosecuting those who were fighting The notion of prosecuting those who were fighting in Bosnia or Croatia was practically unheard of in Serbia at the time. Mr. Stanisic, as the defense case will <coughs> demonstrate, was trying to send a clear message to the Serbian paramilitaries in Bosnia and Croatia. Commit crimes and your time will also come. Mr. Stanisic may therefore be forgiven for being insulted by the links the prosecution now try to make. JF 86 gave evidence that Pavlovic commander of the TO of Zvornik had a close relationship with Mr. Stanisic's deputy, Milan Tepaucevic. Pavlovic came to the MOP building, apparently, to meet Tepaucevic. <coughs> JF086 also testified that Spasiovic would meet Tepaucevic at the MOP Serbia frequently once every week during the first two years of the war. Two local attempts to arrest the members of the Yellow Wasp, led by the Vukovic brothers, failed because Pavlovic signaled to them about their potential arrest and they were able to escape. The prosecution will <coughs> invite you to infer that Tepaucevic was acting at the behest of Stanisic in supporting Pavlovic, who then himself supported the Yellow Wasps.
in our submission Mr. Stanisic's action against this paramilitary group undermines that inference. It also undermines the overall inference that the prosecution want you to draw, which is this, that Mr. Stanisic is responsible because his employees misbehaved or committed crimes in the region or associated with criminals. Perhaps Tepaucevic did behave in that way. Perhaps other subordinates in the DB also acted in that way. But a contract of employment does not make you responsible for the crimes of your employees when they act on a frolic of their own. Slide seven is a continuation of this submission at a time when the Serbian authorities were either in hiding or refusing to cooperate with international justice. Mr. Stanisic was assisting in opening the Srebrenica case in this tribunal. <coughs> As I understand the prosecution's theory concerning paragraph 60 and 61 of the indictment and the killings of the Muslim men and boys from the Srebrenica enclave. They allege that Mr. Stanisic contributed indirectly to those massacres. His delivery of Endemovic to The Hague and his willingness to assist with the opening of the Srebrenica investigation exposes the falsity of that allegation. The second part of the defense, slide eight, will deal with the prosecution's allegation that Mr. Stanisic contributed to the Croatian crime base. The second part of the defense will commence with dismantling the allegations that suggest that Mr. Stanisic established Golubic, that he established his own paramilitary group, that he continued to organize supply and finance Serb forces to commit crimes alleged in the indictment. The defense will show that rather than any significant participation in any criminal purpose, the accused participation in the Kraina was minimal and directed in furtherance of preventing crime and ensuring security for the people of the Kraina. The prosecution allegation starts with the suggestion that six weeks after Milosevic gave the order for the creation of special units tasked with protecting Serb interests outside of Serbia, Stanisic established these units in the State Security Department of the Serbian Ministry of Internal Affairs. And Stanisic and Simatovic established 25 training camps in pursuance of the joint criminal enterprise. The prosecution theory will be exposed as what it is. Had it been based in fact or reality, the prosecution would not, we submit, have struggled so to define what their case is on these essential issues. In the prosecution's first pretrial brief in 2004, the first Red Berets were a discrete group, a select group of trainers from Golubic, 
a clearly identifiable group, the nucleus of the unit, which became the JSO. This can be contrasted with the substantially more flexible theory that was advanced through the opening speech. Uh, the special units of the Serbian DB would refer to themselves by several names, such as JATD and JSO, Arkan's men and Arkan's tigers, Martic's men, Captain Dragon's Kaninjas. A very flexible theory designed to roll with the evidence as it unfolds. The theory is based on the unit documentary, which itself is based on the Kula video ceremony. To build a case, we submit on the vainglorious ramblings of men emerging from civil war, beating their chests in demonstration of their prowess is bound to fail to capture the truth of what happened. It is clear that Golubic was set up and that a group emerged from it known as the Keningers. It is It is common ground between the prosecution that this group, between the prosecution and the defense, that this group did not stay together, but separated into smaller groups of men or individuals to assist in the war effort in Croatia and Bosnia. The defense case will show that the notion that Stanisic had authority or control over all of them at all times is of course a prosecutorial fiction designed to hold him responsible for all their actions. Of course, the accused Mr. Stanisic must take some responsibility for his own present predicament, given that nonsensical, nonsensical speech at Kula in 1996 or 7. It is a demonstrable piece of fiction lifted from a bad Hollywood movie, but no one that no one but perhaps the prosecution believes. It's worth examining Mr. Samasevich's speech for a moment or two, as the defense will do. Mr. Samasevich in the video, marked as exhibit number P61, <coughs> claimed that the Second World War, sorry, the Second War Service Intelligence Administration which was set up at the time, included a special team for offensive and logistical support of the Special Operations Unit. Mr. Samasevich said, from the 12th of October 1991, in battles with armed Croatian police forces in the zones of Benkovac, Stari Gospic, Plitvitsi, Glina, Kostanitsa and others, the unit provided important support in the liberation of all areas in the RSK. Mr. Samatovic claimed that around 5,000 soldiers were engaged in these battles and their actions were coordinated by the command and an intelligence team from the second administration. The defense case will examine the prosecution case and show that that suggestion or those <coughs> suggestions are almost wholly uncorroborated. There is simply no evidence that there was a unit command from the DB and, a, and an intelligence team from the second administration coordinating 5,000 men in the Kraina. On the contrary, 
as the prosecution's own evidence suggests and the defense evidence will corroborate. There was a unity of command in the Kraina and it involved Martich's men <coughs> being subordinated to the JNA. The prosecution's Mladic diaries directly contradict those exaggerated claims. They confirm precisely who was in charge, who was in command, and who was responsible for the combat and the crimes in the locations in the indictment. We have exhibited them. The prosecution elected not to. For example, in regards to fighting in the SAO Kraina, Mladic writes, Sixty-five ter five five nine six. I will find the exhibit number later. That soldiers of the headquarters administration are a disgrace. They cannot distinguish who belongs to Martic and who belongs to Mladic. He writes on P three hundred that he was issuing tasks. This is Mladic to the territorial defence main staff and the sub of the SA, SAOK. Where is Samatovic in Mladic's diary during this critical period? If he or the DB special unit were in command, why does Mladic not notice that? As the defense evidence will show through the testimony of DST 34, DST 62, DST 31, and DST 43. The crimes alleged in the indictment in the Kraina cannot be attributed to a unit command from the Intelligence Administration and cannot be attributed to Mr. Stanisic. As Mr. Stanisic said to me yesterday, I hadn't even heard of Skrbanya. Back to the cooler video. In the video, Mr. Samatovic claimed that the DB created 26 training camps. The claim is nonsensical and will be easily demonstrated to be so. He claimed listing 21 training camps that the DB had created them and in order to service them in 1992 the unit the special unit of the DB began building and securing a network of small airfields in Bosnia and Herzegovina and forming a combat squadron around a thousand combat reconnaissance transport and humanitarian flights were made from the airfields. In Bratunac, Skalani, Sokolot, <coughs> Rogatica, and others. According to Samatovic, those flights, that combat squadron, remained undetected from NATO's sophisticated equipment. It is obvious we submit that that could not be correct. The most sophisticated military organization in the world, thousands of combat flights, a combat squadron, and nobody notices. The defense case will invite your honors to closely examine the prosecution evidence. <laughs> it is all there, we submit, in the prosecution case, and the defense witnesses will explain and contextualize it. Take, for example, Mr. Samatovich's suggestion that the spe special unit built and secured an airfield in Skalani. 
Please see exhibit P2104, slide number nine. It is a military security report that outlines some intelligence received confirming that there was a training camp organized in Skalani, directed by Popovac. Indeed, P2872 confirms that Popovac was, in July 1991, a member of the Kraina Sub Special Purpose Unit. The prosecution evidence from JF 030 confirmed Pupovac had been one of Captain Dragon's pupils. If we turn to slide number nine, prosecution exhibit 2104. One can see that the training camp alleged at Scalani was in fact small and in fact consisted of a few sessions of firing practice and a couple of tactical exercises. Food was provided by the army. There was another training camp set up by a man called Neskovic, but it was only able to attract a few youth. This exhibit should be contrasted with P387, slide number 10. It's a report concerning the Red Berets of the 17th of June, 1993, authenticated by the prosecution witness, Milovanovic. The document notes that the former 5th KVO of the Skalani Battalion was located in the Skalani Elementary School, the so-called Red Berets. They were refusing to follow orders of the Scalani commander. More significantly, the report notes that these men, whoever they were, agreed to join the OB and then will continue during doing security. They had agreed to assist to secure the new airport in Skalani with 16 men and to continue to secure the crossing, a source of income. This is what <coughs> it seems was the reality at Skalani. The so-called Red Berets, if they can indeed be linked to the DB, agreed to assist to secure the new airport. The DB had nothing to do, it seems, with building that airport, only with securing it with a few men. The, the, the truth is, and that's what will be demonstrated during the defense case, is that the cooler speech was a fantasy. The VRS built an airfield in Scalani Ex-members of the Kraina sub were given the job to secure it in order to bring them into the military command. These were volunteers causing trouble, nothing to do with the DB, and that airfield referred to by Mr. Samatovic had nothing to do with Mr. Stanisic. The defense will show that the training allegedly conducted by the Serbian DB and particularly the so-called special unit has been grossly exaggerated and wrongly attributed to Mr. Stanisic and the DB. <coughs> there is a significant difference between taking over a field and conducting a few lessons in tactical maneuvers and the type of investment required for a camp such as Golubic. As DST-42, DST-40, DST-38, and any other person with military experience will explain, to create and supply 
and maintain a training camp takes time, money and supplies. It cannot be done without people knowing about it. The evidence of training bases adduced by the prosecution is evidence in large part of ad hoc exercising camps, even if they could be attributed to Mr. Stanisic. They could not be a significant contribution to any criminal purpose. We have heard much of Fruscagora, and it's worth examining the evidence to illustrate the point. As described by JF031, in the five months that he was there, 40 to 50 people were trained. That is not a training camp. It's an exercising field. It doesn't require resources. It doesn't require supplies. And Mr. Stanisic did not supply it. We do not submit that there were no training camps. We do not suggest that none of the resources of the DB went towards any of the training camps. We do not suggest that no person employed in the permanent or reserve forces of the Serbian MUP or DV DB was involved. There may have been training of some sort at Koronetsa or Paisos or Brutschko, but the defense will establish that these alleged training camps, if they existed, were small and did not require resources. They did not act as the mainstay of the JNA recruits. They did not act as the mainstay of the VRS recruits or any <coughs> other military organization. As witness JF31 confirmed, the DB did not ship logistics to, to Fruscagora. <coughs> Excuse me. Other than training at Mount Tara in 1993 or the training of Fikrit Abdich men during Pauk, Mr. Stanisic had absolutely nothing to do with these exercising camps. The second part of the defense case will demonstrate the following. First, that there was no criminal purpose in the Kraina until at the very earliest, August or September of 1991. As the Kraina witnesses will confirm, the Serbian citizenry were for good objective reasons genuinely frightened for their security. They demanded that the local Kraina authorities provide defensive protection against Croatian authority aggression. That some of the fears were highly subjective does not undermine that demand. That the likes of Matic but especially Babbage, were irresponsible and failed to provide good leadership in this time of crisis is not proof of acting in concert to forcibly remove non-Serbs. A political ambition to link or unify Serbian majority territories in the Kraina to Serbia is not a criminal purpose unless it is intended to be achieved through the commission of crimes. Golubic, created in late 1990, developing through into 1991, emerged from these fears and security concerns. It was designed to create police officers capable of protecting the citizenry 
in this new militarized and violent environment. As confirmed by prosecution witness JF039, and to be corroborated by the defense witnesses, D6, DST62, DST31, and DST43, Golubich was not aimed at the commission of crime, but designed to enable the TO and the police to better conduct their ordinary tasks. The prosecution claimed that any criminal purpose existed prior to August 1991 ignores the reality on the ground and is aimed at implicating Mr. Stanisic through Mr. Samatovich. Indeed, as the defense evidence will show, up until early September 1991, the JNA were acting as a neutral party and were acting as a buffer between the ragtag militia on both sides. If there was a criminal purpose prior to that time, it didn't involve the JNA, nor by extension did it involve Milosevic, nor on the prosecution case, the accused, Mr. Stanisic, who according to the prosecution was Milosevic's right-hand man. As the defense case will show, the Serbian MUP as an institution became involved in May of 1991, not in the manner suggested by the prosecution. The Serbian MUP became involved as an institution to try to prevent war and to try to prevent ethnically based fears boiling over into hatred and violence. It's our submission that nobody was planning at that stage to forcibly transfer any population or even to begin a war. <coughs> a multitude of reports and evidence to be adduced by the defense will corroborate this submission. <laughs> Slide number 11 is an example. It is a security report from the Serbian MUP reporting on the chaos in the Krajina region in May of 1991. It clearly states that we deem it necessary that the MUP of the Republic of Serbia, through the federal SUP and the government of the Republic of Serbia, launch an initiative whereby the SFRY presidency would establish that conditions have been met for the application of Article 8 of the law on the basis of the state security system and issue a decision to the effect that security affairs in the territory of the Republic of Croatia are to be directly organized and carried out by the Federation. And importantly, that joint forces of the federal sub are to be formed in order to protect, operate in threatened areas. In other words, in May of 1991, the Serbian mob was gearing up to prevent crimes and protect all the citizenry of Croatia. Slide number 12 demonstrates the same point, indicating that the Serbian MUP was interested in preventing war and ethnic strife. Slide number 13 demonstrates the challenges po posed at that time. Second, the defense case will demonstrate that Mr. Stanisic did not contribute to any criminal purpose in the Krajina 
before or after August of 1991. The DB was not the mainstay of financial or logistical support for the Kraina or the SBWS. Mr. Stanisic had nothing to do with the setting up of Golubic. Mr. Samatovic was not acting at Mr. Stanisic's or the DB's behest except in intelligence gathering matters. <laughs> Mr. Samatovic was not organizing the training in Golubic. Mr. Stanisic had nothing to do with supplying the Kaninjas or any member of Martich's police during their combat or in furtherance of their combat in the locations specified in the indictment. The defence case will show through the evidence of witness 35, 34, 62 and 31 that on the 4th of January 1991 the Executive Council of the SAO Ukraina established the Regional Secretariat for Internal Affairs in Kanin. On the same date, Martich was appointed the Secretary. On the 5th of January 1991, the Executive Council informed the MUP of Croatia that the establishment of the SUP revoked the authority of the MUP of Croatia in the SAO Ukraina. It is our case that through this period and through this process, the SAO Ukraina Serbian leadership reached out to all parts of the Serbian government and also through personal contacts in order to obtain financial, logistical and military assistance. Slides 14 to 16 demonstrate that assistance came from many and varied sources. The truth of JF 039's claim that Stanisic ordered the setting up of police stations in, in the Ukraine in January 1991 and paid for everything and the money came to the Ukraine in cash delivered in military transport bags by Samatovic has to be seen in the light of those requests for assistance and that assistance being provided. Had Mr. Stanisic been involved in the way suggested had he been so intimate with Martic, there would be evidence that Martic approached Stanisic in, for funds at a later stage. Instead, as P1552 on slide 16 demonstrates, Martic requested financial assistance to Milosevic, Sinovic, and Sokolovic for the salaries of his policemen. Why did he not write to Stanisic if Stanisic had been delivering cash in the bags described by the prosecution case? In any event, we submit that the prosecution case fails to consider the reality the prosecution's interpretation of the JCE fails to discern contributions by Serbian institutions did designed to enha enhance the security of the SA Ukraina and Serbian areas in general from contributions designed to fuel war and hatred or advance the alleged criminal purpose. Ordinary Serbian citizens in the SAO Ukraina deserved better leaders, but their failure to elect them did not mean they waived their right to security. 
That had to be provided through a functioning criminal justice system. The Serbian government, including the federal and Serbian MUP, were right to respond to requests for assistance. Of course, that response must be carefully analyzed to see what that assistance was and how it was intended. But as the defense will show, there were genuine, objectively based security concerns. The prosecution invitation to treat all assistance to the Kraina as intended to further a criminal purpose must be resisted. That is clear, we submit, from the prosecution's own case. And it will be made clearer during the defense case. JF035 and others were making operational decisions about how the police stations, the new police stations set up by the Serbian authorities, would operate. JF35 indicated that it was the SAO SBWS's police duty and I quote, to protect all citizens living there. Those who behaved properly, who did nothing wrong, and lived normally. Your Honours will find that uh, on the 28th of June, pages 6011 to 6012. There was a need for the newly established police stations to be equipped with supplies and that included some weapons in order to be able to be a fully functioning police force to fight the crimes committed by criminals who were running amok. Therefore, the MUP of Serbia was approached and responded. They had relevant expertise and, of course, some supplies. Nonetheless, this material assistance both in the Kninkrain and the SPWS, did not involve the Serbian DB. It is the defense case that most of this assistance had absolutely nothing to do with Mr. Stanisic. The defence evidence. If you could find a suitable moment within the next five minutes to uh, have a break, uh, it would be appreciated. Oh, yes. The defence evidence will show that Mr. Stanisic's main role was on the mainland, protecting the Republic of S Serbia. If your honours needed to repair a car, you go to a mechanic. When Martic, Babic, Hadzic, et al. needed to set up police stations, they went to the federal SUP and the public security section of the Republican SUP. The prosecution case obscures the fact that the Serbian MUP consisted of two parts. Slide 17 to 19 provide some examples which will be corroborated during the defense case. That Mr. Stanisic and the DB were not involved, except in the most minimal of ways, and only then for legitimate security purposes. As the prosecution evidence shows, and the defense evidence will support, Martic had no expectation at any time that Stanisic would provide him or his police with any supplies of any kind. On the contrary, Martic approached Stanisic on an extremely limited basis. He knew where Stanisic's expertise was based. Slide number 20, prosecution exhibit P1556 provides an eloquent demonstration of what Martic sought from Mr. Stanisic. Well, that's a convenient moment. 
Yes, let's take a break. I have, however, one question before we do so for you. Um, y yesterday we discussed the um, expert report to be produced by Mr. Brown, and uh, is it is described as various aspects of. Um, you have relied several times on the knowledge diaries today. Does that mean that there's no basic challenge to the authenticity of it? Th there is no basic challenge to the fact that Ma Babi uh, Mladic wrote the diary. Yes, uh, you say perhaps when he did that, th that's another matter, and these are perhaps matters. Uh, we, because it was unclear to us what the various aspects would be, but I now understand that there's no basic challenge that these documents were produced by uh, Mr. Mladic, that's yeah. the position of the Honor, yes. its defense. And, and what, what we will uh, submit is that in relation to where Mladic implicates others, they should be approached with extreme caution. In relation to where Babic, excuse me, where Mladic uh, lays out more contextual evidence, Your Honours can, can more easily rely upon that. Yes, you'd say we have to be very cautious in interpreting or in uh, accepting uh, the truthfulness of, of parts of what he has written down. Uh, as, uh, yes. Yes. And could I just perhaps check with you, Mr. Uh, Petrovic, uh, does the Simatovic defense take a similar position in relation to these um, Diaries. Your Honours, in principle, yes. Thank you for those answers. Um, we'll have a break and we'll resume at a quarter to eleven. All right, we have a way.